Uh, so the key takeaways from chapter one, breaking the surface of head first Java are actually how Java works and Java code structure. Let's go through Java, how Java works first, okay? So there are actually four steps in its execution. Uh, the first one will be uh, the source code, the .java files, where you have written the Java code actually. So those source codes act as input for compiler and compiler will compile and produce .class files, which are also called bytecodes as output. Now JVMs uh, will uh, take these byte bytecodes or dot class files as input and will execute the program. So these JVMs uh, could be running on different types of platform. Those platforms could be uh, could be mobile, could be laptop, it could be tablet. And JVM actually converts uh, the dot class files and bytecodes uh, into something the underlying platforms over which the JVMs are running understand. So um, that's why this is all actually an important feature of Java that you can just code once and then run it on different platforms. Okay, uh, let's talk about compiler a bit as well. So uh, Java is a strongly typed language and by that I mean, uh, let's say you have defined a variable as int. So you can't store things like float and double and strings in that particular variable. If you do, the compiler will give you an error at compile time. So despite Java being a strongly typed language, you can still get something called class cast exception. Uh, this is something, uh, this is actually allowed by the compiler to enable one feature called dynamic binding. This is actually when type of object is determined at runtime. Compiler also helps you to avoid access violations like let's say if you have defined your instance variables or methods as private and it's being called by uh, called by you know called let's say called outside the class uh, so Java compiler helps you there as well it will throw accept it will throw error in that case as well okay let's move to Java code structure so code structure of Java is fairly simple you have a file in file you define class and classes can have methods and inside methods you can have different statements so Java execution always, always starts from main function or main method. Method and function are the same thing in Java. And um, uh, not every Java class needs to have a main method. So in a Java program, you can have thousands and millions of classes, but not every class needs to have main method. All you need is just one main method to start the execution. That's it. Okay, so that's it for uh, chapter one. Uh, see you in chapter two.